Pokemon form changes are some of the coolest things in the game. These are just one of the many things that add variety and flavor to this ever-changing game. However, not all form changes were created equally. So in this video, I'll be ranking every Pokemon form change ability from worst to best. Now, how will I be ranking these abilities? Since all of these abilities are signature abilities and therefore are only available to use on that one Pokemon, I will be judging how they function in the context of that one Pokemon. I'll be looking at not only how a Pokemon changes between forms, but how beneficial it is to change between those forms, as in almost all cases, one form is meant to be stronger than the other. If that stronger form is very good, but the conditions needed for that Pokemon to change to that form are very specific or hard to accomplish, that will be a knock against it. If that form change is very easy to accomplish, but it is not very beneficial for that Pokemon to make that change, that will also be a knock against it. If the Pokemon is not very strong overall, but its form change ability is good, it being weak will not be a point against it unless that is the only factor left to consider. Additionally, most of these Pokemon only get their one form change ability and no other ability options, but some of them actually have an alternate ability. So for those Pokemon, I will be considering the opportunity cost involved in not choosing that other ability if it would benefit them more than using the form change ability. Keep in mind that I will only be talking about form changes that are due to abilities, so form changes from a key item like the forces of nature, or from a move like Meloetta, will not be ranked. Also I know the title says 16 abilities, but one of these abilities I will be breaking up into two parts, making 17 total entries. You'll see why. With all that being said, let's rank all form changing abilities in Pokemon. Number 17, Unovan Darmanitan Zen Mode. This ability allows for Darmanitan to change between its standard and Zen mode form. When its HP is above half, it stays in its standard form. When its HP drops below half, it will change into its Zen mode form at the end of the turn. Darmanitan can change back to its standard form if its HP gets back over half. This Zen mode form gains the Psychic typing and has completely different stats. The thing about these stats though, is that it completely changes the kind of archetype it battles by. Standard mode Darmanitan is a glass cannon with high attack and low defenses, while Zen mode Darmanitan is more of a bulky trick room special attacker with its low speed, high special attack, and high defenses. Now, if these were two completely separate Pokemon with their own abilities, that would be just fine. But since this is on the same Pokemon, and it uses up its ability in doing so, it hardly functions at all. You would have to have both physical and special moves to take advantage of using both of Darmanitan's forms, and it also doesn't get any HP restoring moves like Recover or Slack Off if you want to change back to its standard form. Using this ability on Darmanitan also comes at the opportunity cost of not using its other ability, Sheer Force. This is a solid ability that Darmanitan is able to take advantage of, mainly with Flare Blitz, as it has a secondary effect and is thus able to get boosted. It also doesn't change Darmanitan's stats so drastically that its whole playstyle needs to be different, making Unovan Darmanitan's Zen Mode essentially useless and a waste of an ability, landing it in last place for this list. Number 16, Wishiwashi Schooling. This ability allows Wishiwashi to change between its school and solo form. When its HP is above 25%, it stays in school form. If its HP drops to 25% or below, it changes to solo form. Wishiwashi can change back to its school form if its HP gets back over 25%. The only difference between the two forms is the base stats. Wishiwashi in its school form has an incredibly high base stat total of 620. In its solo form though, it has literally the lowest base stat total of any Pokemon ever at 175. You would think that with how powerful Wishiwashi is in its school form, it might be decent for competitive battling. But with a speed stat of 30, it won't be able to outspeed anything except for maybe a slowpoke, so it would have to be in Trick Room to function at all. Its low HP stat is really what holds it back though. Remember that Wishiwashi has to stay above 25% of its max HP to stay in school form. If Wishiwashi invests fully into HP with a perfect HP IV, at level 50, it will only reach up to 152 hit points. This means that an opponent would only have to deal 114 hit points of damage for Wishiwashi to revert back to its solo form, where it might as well be considered dead weight with stats this bad. While Wishiwashi can gain its school form back if its HP gets over 25% again, it gets no HP restoring moves other than Rest, which every Pokemon gets, and Aqua Ring, which only heals 1 16th of its max HP every turn. Number 15, Morpico's Hunger Switch. 
This ability allows Morpeko to change between its full belly mode form and hangry mode form, alternating between the two at the end of every turn. This form change has no effect on Morpeko's stats or typing, doesn't grant any stat boost, or any other unique boosts. The only thing this form change does is change the type of Morpeko's signature move, Aura Wheel, from electric type in full belly mode to dark type in hangry mode. While Aura Wheel is actually a very good signature move, being 110 base power, 100% accurate, and raising Morpeko's speed by one stage after use, this form change literally does nothing else. Since ground is immune to electric, this can be very easy to play around by just protect stalling the turn Morpeko is dark type, and then switching to a ground type. While the form change is very underwhelming, at the very least, it doesn't come with any significant downsides or drawbacks. Number 14, Cramorant's Gulp Missile. This ability allows for Cramorant to change between its gulping and gorging form. It changes forms when using either the move Surf or Dive, depending on its HP. Gulping form when its HP is over half, and gorging form when its HP is at half or below. After it enters into one of these forms, it will damage the attacker by one fourth of their max HP and inflict a secondary effect. In gulping form, that secondary effect is lowering the attacker's defense by one stage. In gorging form, that secondary effect is paralyzing the attacker. Since this ability doesn't change Cramorant's really mid base stats, the slight bit of extra damage this deals is not worth the setup needed for this ability to take effect. Lowering defense and paralyzing are also just really underwhelming secondary effects, and if you wanted to do either of these things, there exist status moves and even some attacking moves that accomplish the same thing. Like Morpeko though, this ability at least doesn't ever make Cramorant weaker or have a significant drawback like some of the other abilities on this list. Number 13, Cast Form's Forecast. This allows Cast Form to change between its normal, sunny, rainy, and snowy form. It starts off as a normal type in its normal form and changes forms depending on the current weather condition on the battlefield. Sunny form for harsh sunlight, where it transforms into a fire type. Rainy form for rain, where it transforms into a water type and snowy form for hail, where it transforms into an ice type. It does not have a sandstorm form though, but it's not like that would help because this form change ability does not do nearly enough. Cast form stats of 70 across the board remain completely unchanged, and its typing is the only thing that changes at all. This at least gives cast form stab on more moves, and its alternate forms are kinda cute, but that's about it. Number 12, Cherim's Flower Gift. This ability allows Cherim to change between its overcast form and its sunshine form. Before Generation 5, the form change used to work independently of the ability, but starting in Generation 5, the ability is what causes the form change. What activates the form change is still the same though, which is being exposed to harsh sunlight. This form change has no effect on Cherim's typing or base stats, except in Legends Arceus, where its stats do change. This doesn't count though, as it is not due to Cherim's ability, but rather just a unique interaction since Legends Arceus doesn't have abilities. So the only thing this ability does is raise the attack and special defense of Cherim and Cherim's ally when exposed to harsh sunlight. While this is definitely good, it's too situational for it to really be considered viable for competitive use. I do think that it offers more use than Cast Form's Forecast though, but not as much as the next entry on this list, which is also weather dependent. That being number 11, Ice Q's Ice Face. This ability allows Ice Q to change between its Ice Face and Noise Face form. Ice Q starts out in its Ice Face form and changes to its Noise Face form when hit with a physical attack. Ice Q can change back to its Ice Face form if hail slash snow starts when it is on the battlefield, but not if the weather condition is already present before Ice Q is sent in. Ice Q does not change base stat totals between forms, but does have a slight change in the distribution of those stats. The reason this form change kinda sucks though, is that Ice Q's offensive stats remain unchanged between forms, making its increase in speed hardly relevant and having a meaningful impact on its offense. It's common for form change abilities to have one form more focused on offense and one form more focused on defense, where switching between those forms allows for more specialized roles on a team. But Ice Q's stats are not different enough for its role to change and not high enough for it to be good in the first place. Its Ice Face also has no effect on special moves, so if you're up against a special attacker, you're essentially playing with no ability. I do still think that this form change has more significant use cases than the previous ones on this list though. Number 10, Minior's Shields Down. This ability allows Minior to change between its Meteor and Core form. 
It starts out in its meteor form and changes to its core form if its HP is below half at the end of the turn. Minior can change back to its meteor form if its HP gets back over half. In its meteor form, it has a base stat total of 440 that is defense oriented and is also immune to all non-volatile status conditions. In its core form, it has a base stat total of 500 that is offense oriented. Minior in its core form is no longer immune to status conditions, and if it becomes inflicted with a status condition while in its core form and transforms back to its meteor form, the status condition will not be healed. This change and condition to change is definitely the best so far, but it is still pretty underwhelming. Number 9. Ash Greninja's Battle Bond only in Generation 7. This allows Greninja to change between its base form and Ash Greninja form. A Greninja with Battle Bond will change into Ash Greninja when it knocks out another Pokemon with a damaging move, and it will stay in that form for the remainder of the battle. In its Ash Greninja form, it has a base stat total of 640 and gets 50 more attack, 50 more special attack, and 10 more speed. This is just a strict upgrade in stats, and an increase of 110 is the fourth highest of all form change abilities. This does not change Greninja's role, just makes it more specialized towards offense, which is a good thing when done in this capacity. The drawbacks of this form change ability are the specific conditions needed for Greninja to transform, and the opportunity cost of not using Greninja's other ability, Protean, which changes its type to the type of the move it's about to use, giving it stab on every attacking move it uses. Unfortunately for Greninja, both of these abilities were nerfed in Generation 9. Ash Greninja is no longer in the game at all, Battle Bond was completely reworked to grant a plus one boost to attack, special attack, and speed once per game when knocking out a Pokemon, and Protean was changed to only work the first time a Pokemon is switched in battle. Number 8. Galarian Darmanitan Zen Mode this allows Galarian Darmanitan to change between its standard and Zed mode form. The condition in which Galarian Darmanitan changes forms is the exact same as Unovan Darmanitan, but the stats and typing are different. The reason that Galarian Darmanitan is so much higher on the list is that the base stats between Galarian Darmanitan and Zen mode Galarian Darmanitan are of the same glass cannon archetype, meaning that it does not completely change its playstyle when it changes form. In fact, it actually enhances its playstyle entirely, only becoming faster and stronger. However, the main drawback is the opportunity cost of not using Galarian Darmanitan's other ability, Gorilla Tactics, which functions exactly like a built-in choice band. Galarian Darmanitan with Gorilla Tactics generally likes to use the Choice Scarf, which has the exact same drawback as its ability, so it really has no drawback. You could also use the Choice Band if you want to go all out on attack, but either way, Gorilla Tactics is typically better and easier to use than Zen Mode. It is still better than Unovan Darmanitan Zen Mode though. Number 7, Silvalli's so RKS System, and number 6, Arceus's Multi-Type. These abilities do the same thing, which is change the user's type to the type of a certain item they are holding. Silvalli so changes type depending on the memory disk it holds, while Arceus changes type depending on the plate it holds. The only reason that I'm putting Arceus in front of Silvalli is because in addition to changing Arceus's type, the plates also grant an additional 20% boost to the moves of those types. There is no boost to moves of a certain type with the memory discs, so Silvalli essentially has to give up its item slot to be able to change its type at all. These two Pokemon also both get a signature move that changes type along with the corresponding type of the item it holds, and while Silvalli's is stronger at 120 base power, Arceus's is pretty much 120 base power after you factor in the plate boost. Now this might seem like the same thing, but Arceus could also use other moves of its current type to get a boost from its item, while the same thing cannot be said about Silvalli. This is the only reason Arceus is in front of Silvalli in this ranking. Number 5. Palafin's Zero to Hero. This allows Palafin to change between its Zero and Hero form. Palafin always starts battle in its Zero form, and only changes to its hero form after being brought back after switching out. This is probably one of my favorite form changes thematically, as Palafin in its zero form is like Clark Kent, who then changes into Superman when no one's looking. Anyway, the only difference between these two forms is the base stats. Palafin in its zero form starts out at a base stat total of 457, which is lower than a Greedent. In its hero form though, it gains 193 stat points, totaling 650, which is almost on par with legendaries like the base form Dogs and Kyurem. While it is generally outclassed by Urshifu Rapid Strike in formats where both are legal, 
When Urshifu isn't legal, Palafin is one of the best water types there is. Just requiring a switch out to change forms is very reasonable in most cases, especially with Palafin's speed and access to Flip Turn, the slightly weaker water type equivalent of U-Turn. Number 4. Mimikyu's Disguise This allows Mimikyu to change between its disguised and busted form. Mimikyu always starts battle in its disguised form, where it will be able to eat up any single hit for no damage and then change to its busted form at the cost of 1 8th of its max HP, where it will stay for the remainder of the battle. This is really the only form change ability where the user starts out in its stronger form and then changes to its weaker form. It is still a form change that affects how Mimikyu is played defensively though, and it is quite good. The only drawbacks of this ability are the small amount of HP Mimikyu takes when its disguise gets busted, something that was changed starting in Sword and Shield, and the fact that Mimikyu cannot get its disguise back until the battle is over. If disguise was never nerfed, this ability would probably be number 2 or 3, but it is still very good. Number 3. Zygarde's Power Construct This allows Zygarde to change between either its 10 or 50% form to its complete form. Zygarde starts out in either its 10 or 50% form, and changes to its complete form when its HP gets below half, where it will stay for the remainder of the battle. Both Zygarde's base stat total and base stat distribution change, which is the highest total of any form change ability in the game. It doesn't really get a significant change other than its HP though, assuming you start out in its 50% form, which is one of the drawbacks of this ability. The other drawback is arguably not even a drawback, but I'll mention it anyway, which is the opportunity cost involved in not choosing Zygarde's alternate ability, Aura Break. Aura Break is an extremely situational ability that literally only has use if you or your opponent has either Xerneas or Yveltal. All it does is reverse the effects of their Aura abilities, making their Fairy and Dark type moves weaker instead of stronger. If your opponent doesn't have a Xerneas or Yveltal, you're essentially playing without an ability. So I would say that in 95% of scenarios, Power Construct is better on Zygarde than Aura Break. Number 2. Terrapagos' Terra Shift this is by far the easiest form change to perform out of any form change ability in the game. The way Terrapagos' Terra Shift works is that Terrapagos starts off in its base form before battle, and as soon as it enters battle, it shifts into its Terrastal form. It is impossible for Terrapagos to battle in its normal form, and shifting to its Terrastal form comes at no drawback, since it happens as soon as it switches in. In doing so, it goes from a base stat total of 450, one of the worst of any legendaries in the game, to 600, right around where most legendary Pokemon base stats lie. It also gains a new ability, Terra Shell, that it keeps for the entirety of the game unless it terrestrializes, in which case it will gain another new ability, Terraform Zero. It will also have its stats changed again, but I'm not counting this form because it is not due to its ability, but rather its unique terrestrialization. If I were counting Terra Shell and Terraform Zero, Terrapagos would definitely be number one by the way. Due to how easy and how beneficial it is for Terrapagos to change forms, it is no doubt one of the best form change abilities in the game. But there is one form change ability that I think is a bit better, which is number one, Aegislash's Stance Change. This allows Aegislash to change between its shield and blade form. Aegislash starts off in shield form and changes to blade form when it uses an attacking move and changes back to shield form when using the move King's Shield. Aegislash's base stat total does not change, but the distribution of its stats do. Like I said in an earlier entry, it's very common for form change abilities to have one form more oriented towards offense and the other more oriented towards defense. Aegislash takes this to an extreme degree, where it has base 150 attack and special attack in its blade form and base 150 defense and special offense in its shield form, which was too good so it got nerfed to 140 in Sword and Shield. The way that it changes between these forms is really what puts this form change at the number one slot though. To change from shield to blade form, Aegislash just needs to use an attacking move. Its stance change ability will then activate, stating that it is changing forms. To change from blade to shield form, it just needs to use the move King's Shield or switch out of battle. King's Shield is a protect variant that unfortunately doesn't protect from status moves, but it does cause contact moves to lower the attacker's attack stat by two stages, the only protect variant with a property like this. This is not only one of the easier form changes to perform, but also one of the most beneficial, earning it the number one spot. And that's every form change ability ranked. Do you disagree with any of my rankings? Let me know in the comments. I feel like a lot of the lower ranked ones are pretty interchangeable, since they're all very situational and borderline useless. The others though, I can definitely see there being some disagreement. 
But either way, I really appreciate if you watched all the way to the end, as this is my longest video so far, and it did take me a while to make. If you want to support me and my channel, the best way to do so is just by leaving a nice comment. I am now doing early video access to members, but I don't have any perks other than that, so please do not join unless you really want to support me and you are financially capable of doing so. Likes are also one of the ways in which YouTube determines if a video should be passed around to more people, so if you feel that this video deserves it, I would appreciate it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.